never underestimate the amount of like monetization and billing work that needs to get done. Ultimately, if you want to be truly product led, you need uh, you need your customers to be able to buy the product on their own, upgrade, downgrade, expand all on their own. And and typically, what I find is is those billing projects are complex and take mm-hmm. a lot of time. And so I think that's the first roadblock. You can't just flip a switch and say we're product led now. Hey everyone, George Soto here, and you're watching the Product Led Revenue Show. Today I'm joined by my good friend Steve Marinick, who's the director of product marketing at Philadelphia based Guru. We use Guru, everyone uses Guru. You folks are like super product led. How are you, Steve? I'm doing really well. Thrilled to chat, George. Uh, yeah, product led. Let's do it, man. Totally. Well, I was actually just looking through Rob's book last night because oh, yeah. I'm going to have him on the show, uh, I think in a couple of weeks. And uh, man, you really have been moving the needle on this whole thing. Why don't you take a quick second to just introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about your career background and how did you get into technology? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Uh, I, you know, I've been in, in tech for about a decade now. Uh, been leading product marketing teams for about seven of those. Uh, and yeah, I, I mean, like you mentioned, director of product marketing at, at Guru right now, had previously um, led the function at RJ Metrics, uh, which we'll talk about that experience, which was super interesting, where we kind of built a second product that was very product led. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I love all things product marketing. I love the intersection of how technical it can be and how strategic it can be. Uh, and really excited to dig in today and, and chat about um, what product marketing looks like in a product-led organization. Totally. Well, what is product-led growth and why is it so popular right now? I know I've been asking folks pretty much every show, whether yeah. it's Demo Diaries or this one, just because it seems to be popping up across the entire revenue chain. Oh, Yeah. Uh, So I tend to think about, you know, you are product led if you are optimizing for the find, try and buy experience to be self-service. And the key word there is optimize, because I think uh, in every organization, there's there's a confluence of of go to market motions. Uh, There are always going to be sales reps at most of these companies. Right. So uh, optimize is the key word. And uh, I think there are a couple things and and macro trends as to why product led is so prominent today. The first is just go to any G2 grid and you'll be overwhelmed by the amount of competitors in each category. And you know what I what I typically find is when you look at that category, there's actually a giant range of, of outcomes as far as what the product can actually do uh, and says it does. And and the second big trend is, you know, I, I tend to think of this whole year as we've never had more time, but we're, we've also never been busier, right? And Everyone's inundated with with information. Uh, you know, Microsoft Teams just released this awesome trend report where they said, um, you know, you're, uh, the the average Teams user is getting twice as many messages as they were before. So people are busy. People are inundated with information. The last thing they want to do is jump on a demo and go through a pitch. Like they they want to learn and discover and explore on their own time. And I think that's really lent itself well to product led. Totally. What roadblocks do you see folks run into when deciding to go product led or maybe they are, you know, have like a sales led motion and then they want to transition to product led or perhaps they went product led out of the gate yeah. and then encountered a couple of things. I know you folks kind of have had like a hybrid oh, approach, yeah. right? What are some of those challenges and how did you get through those? Yes, uh, we've lived and learned <laughs> through a lot of this. Uh, I would say the the first thing, um, a a little bit more on the product side is never underestimate the amount of like monetization and billing work that needs to get done. Ultimately, if you want to be truly product led, you need, uh, you need your customers to be able to buy the product on their own, upgrade, downgrade, expand on their own. And, and typically what I find is, is those billing projects are complex and take Mm. a lot of time. And so I think that's the first roadblock. You can't just flip a switch and say, we're product led now. Yeah. Swipe um, a credit card. You know, exactly. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
you know, I think the other, uh, and this is near and dear to my heart at, at Guru, obviously, is all around documentation. And there's two sides of this. Um, you can imagine that when you're encouraging your customers to discover your product on their own, learn on their own, and try it on their own, the types of questions that they're going to have are going to be more nuanced and, and more mm. specific around the product mm. itself. And they might not have questions around like, how much is this per seat? Because a lot of product led companies lead with their pricing. The question might be, you know, I, I hit a snag with this integration. Can you help me troubleshoot it? And those type of questions can, can find themselves uh, in front of sales reps now who are not used to answering those type of questions, you know, in a typical enterprise sales led motion, somebody like that has, has a sales engineer or mm -hmm some sort of support to answer the more technical questions. So sales becomes a little bit more technical in nature. And so you need better documentation, both for your customers to be able to look at your help center and be able to troubleshoot some of these on their own. And also uh, just for your customer facing teams to be able to uh, help customers work through some of these mm -hmm. as they continue to explore uh, and try to figure out if your product's right for them. Steve, just quick Quick question, because yeah. one thing that pops up all the time, and this is me as a end user slash consumer, is what's the balance between, okay, if I'm going to be product led, I'm going to have FAQs and self-serve cards and yeah. those sort of things, right? And I know you folks are fantastic at this, being able to provide cards and documentation internally and externally, right? But what's the sort of balance or fine line, it seems that we walk between, okay, we're going to get humans involved yep. in, at this point or at this step or, you know, in the touch uh, versus, okay, this is just going to be completely documents and we're yes. not going to support them uh, at all. And like, uh, and I totally get it. Like as an entrepreneur, I understand unit economics and CAC and, and then all the other, uh, you know, uh, metrics that we try to sort of optimize. But I also, as a consumer, understand that, you know what, I just sometimes I really just need to talk to a human and I can't 100%. read four pages. So what's your take on that? Yeah, I mean, uh, th this is a great follow up to the roadblocks question, because I think this is another one, which is um, the, the human capital and the people internally that are in these customer facing roles uh, generally have this sense of like, I'm less important now because we're product led. The reality is they're more important than ever. Uh, so the way we structure it at Guru is, is we very much want our customers to be able to choose their path. Sometimes that's entirely self-service. Um, sometimes we call uh, what we call low touch, which is, hey, you know, I, I just might need a little guidance from somebody uh, around the sales process or, you know, I need to run this up to the, the chain. Can I get like, uh, you know, some value oriented messaging and, and metrics? Um all the way to the, the high touch traditional sales model. We, we try to accommodate for both and really optimize around what is the best customer experience that we can deliver to, you know, different types of personas, different types of personalities uh, and, and try to accommodate for the different ways people buy. Um, but like I mentioned, I, I think that puts an increased onus uh, on our, our sellers, on our support teams, um, to be able to handle those conversations better. And it makes them more important than ever. Got it. What metrics should we be looking at? Uh, you know, if you're deploying a product led, let's yeah. say marketing sales and even like post sales motion, what, what should we be looking for particularly early on and then perhaps at scale? Yeah, a great question. So I think from a marketing standpoint, everything that you can do around growth marketing becomes infinitely more important. So uh, instead of showing up at a trade show, passing around one sheets and, and trying to get somebody on the phone with one of your uh, enterprise sales reps, what you're optimizing for is non-branded keywords around the problems you solve and, and trying to capture anyone who could be Googling a problem mm -hmm. that your product solves for. So non-branded keywords is a really, really good one to be looking at and just generally website traffic and engagement um, within the product itself. And this is something that our, our sales team actually uh, looks at and our product team and our marketing team 
something called activation. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we have a custom metric where we say, hey, in any product-led environment, somebody's going to get to a point, a threshold where they've realized value. They get it. They have that aha moment. And so we've tried to work really, really closely across those three functions and say, you know, what is it about, about Guru? Where do people get where we start to see like they've hit this threshold of engagement where it's going to lead to more and more engagement? Mm. Um, so to give you a sense, it's, it's like, hey, invited five users, mm. uh, you know, created X type of content. Um, and we measure that really closely. So the sales team can help shepherd that process along if they're, they're seeing an account created that's not activated. Um, and at the same time, those are, those are really great um, metrics for us to monitor to make sure that the traffic we're driving is actually, you know, the promise that we're making on that landing page that they search for, find the landing page that we're delivering on that pro- pro- promise in the product. Um, so those are really, really good ones. I, I think um, as you move forward, again, the intersection of product marketing and sales is so interesting to me. Um, expansion is critical to any product-led business. And I'd say if you're an expansion business, you might want to think about that um, because you, you, know, you land with, with a single user, he, finds, he or she finds value, they invite more people, they find value, and those network effects kind of take over. Um, so one thing we look really, really, really closely at are engagement re- metrics and um, expansion. Uh, specifically, what are, you know, based on who you are and what you're trying to do, what are the features that we should be showing you first? How does that lend itself to you reaching that activation point? And then, you know, the second part of that is, what, what features then do we introduce to you? What customer stories do we then introduce to you that open up your eyes around um, how Guru can solve more problems for more people at your company? And so those expansion metrics become really critical for, for sales and marketing at that point. And tying those to specific features um, based on behaviors is, is really interesting. Interesting. So are you saying that for certain types of users, you know, sort of unlock particular features and you might, in other words, you might, let's say, be uh, you viewing the usage of a fintech company mm-hmm. and you'll be like, all right, their engagement looks like this. This is generally a feature that a fintech SaaS company would like right now versus, let's say, MarTech. Yeah. So really great question. Uh, I'll start by saying it's early days for us. So I, I think we're starting to see signals that this is really mm-hmm. successful, but we haven't um, built this out in the way that we we hope to one day. Um, well, so we, taking, when you taking, do, taking, let me know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, taking a step back and, and thinking about what changes for product marketing in a product-led environment. It's a question I get all the time. And, and I think there's a, it's a lot of different answers. For me, um, you really have to start anchoring around problems, not categories. So what I mean by that, and I'll use, you know, Guru as an example, we're we're a knowledge management product, right? You've used it, you you know it, but what Guru can do for you is very different. And so if we want to go capture all the interest of people looking for knowledge management tools, that's great, but that's not going to lend itself to the type of inbound that you need to drive a product led business. Mm -hmm. And so what we did is we actually said, okay, Let's revisit the jobs to be done framework and try to figure out exactly how people are using our product to accomplish specific jobs, which was a big flip for us from a product marketing standpoint. And what we found was there were three major buckets of of, um, ways in which our customers were finding success with Guru. The first was what we call product enablement, which is there's tons of product information, uh, you know, we have some really technical products that we work with and customers we support like, like GitHub. Um, and there's just a, a wide breadth of information that we need to make sure gets in the right people's hands at the right times. Um, the second is employee onboarding, which is, hey, you know, I know Reprise is growing like crazy, right? <laughs> you, you have to onboard a whole bunch of people. How do I make sure that you, George, don't have to... Uh, answer the same question 10 times with 10 new employees coming on board. We um, feel that every day and we use Guru. Yeah. Today yeah. For that. um, that's awesome to hear. But, but um, it's interesting though. Cause like, if you were to say to somebody, we have a knowledge management tool, 
that can mean so many different things mm-hmm. uh, that can mean nothing to somebody. But when I say, hey, like our product helps you ramp people up quicker by giving them the information they need and freeing up your subject matter experts from answering the same questions again and again, whole different conversation. Um, and it also, again, it, it just, it casts a wider net for us. The person that was Googling for knowledge management software uh, is a very specific type of person, but anyone can be searching for how to more effectively onboard employees in a remote context. Um, and the third one that's really been interesting is internal communications and just streamlining that. And um, we won't go into that one, but but we've really just oriented our entire funnel around these uh, these three jobs that Guru helps people do. Our category hasn't changed, but it's fundamentally changed the way you know we go to market with them and. Um, the way we deliver value is very different based on what somebody's trying to do. Uh, so if you have a big product launch coming up, we know that there are specific features that will help you launch products more successfully uh, in Guru, as opposed to Slack's a mess. We need to figure out how to like streamline these internal communications and produce repeat questions. You know, then we might want to point somebody towards our uh, Slack integration first and give mm-hmm. them very specific how tos and customer stories around that. And so we've really had to change a lot uh, as we've leaned more and more into product led. Uh, it's been an interesting exercise, but again, anchor on people's specific problems. And that will not only help you deliver that promise to your customer better, but it will also cast a wider net as far as how people actually land on your, on your website and sign up for, for a free trial or a demo. I love that the way you categorize that as people specific problems and not user specific, because I think user specific might be too functionality based, you know, at times, but people specific is sort of like, hey, I need to onboard folks, right? I need to, you know, accomplish these things. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about alignment. You mentioned how sales and product marketing alignment is so key within product led motions you know, messaging and alignment can be off, you know, within every organization that has to communicate, right? What are some of the challenges you've seen uh, teams sort of deal with in terms of alignment and how have uh, top producers or top leaders been able to kind of work around that? Yeah, uh, really, really good question. And and again, I don't think one that we've, we've, we've cracked quite yet. Um, but I, I think, you know, when it comes to sales and marketing alignment, there's always a little bit of healthy tension there. And so expectation setting is, is, is challenging on both sides. And I think, uh, like I mentioned, the seller's role just becomes so much more complex in this environment and important, but that's very challenging. So there's enablement repercussions and ramifications to that. But I would say, um, speaking specifically to product marketers, uh, there are a lot of, of old school product marketers or even new generation product marketers who uh, often throw around the, the term content jockey. Like they just feel like their role in a traditional go to market is one sheets and decks. Mm. And um, I think if you were to ask most product marketers what they want to do less of, it's that. Um, and there's always, there's always a time and a place for a good one sheet, good slides, absolutely. Uh, but the role of product marketing, again, changes a little bit here because you have to be more deeply embedded in the product and engineering organization, deeply understand the problems that your customers are trying to solve and be a great uh, representative, representative of the sales team um, because they, they're hearing things from the market every day. We need to make sure we're meet, meeting that market demand and trying to understand where that demand goes. Uh, and, and so again, I find uh, our team has to create a lot more documentation internally. Um, And there are just trade-offs. We can't create as many decks or as as many one sheets as we could in the past, Uh, but trying to free our sales team up with the right information so that they can self-serve templates and and documentation so that they can go build those things themselves. Um, Because the reality is we're still, you know, working on big deals that require very specific decks and very specific resources that, that our buyers are asking for. Um, but it's, it's a trap that you can fall into as a product marketer 
again, going back to the definition, it's like, what are you optimizing for? And you have to make really, really tough um, calls when it comes to priorities and say, I'm, I'm going to optimize for the web experience, for the self-serve motion and anything I can create that can be repurposed. Awesome. Um, but that's been a, that's been a challenging shift for sure. Well, I know you've been really doubling down on product led and a lot of organizations are trying to kind of determine, does that mean a free trial? Yeah. Is that a freemium? Like, how do you know which one is going to work for you? I know that's yeah. sort of a hard question, or at least which one you should start experimenting with first. Is it a free trial? Is it going to be a like a demo instance? Of course, we that's what we do here. We uh, yeah. help folks with uh, demos, obviously, so we're biased. However, how do you actually determine that as a as a marketer? It's a it's a tough question. Uh, really, really excited about what you guys are building. Um, and I would say, like the the one of the questions that I would ask myself, um, you know, are you product led? Should you be product led or not? Uh, is a simple one. Is it easier to feel the value of your product or articulate it? And um, as, as challenging as that is for us, like we know people's aha moments don't, don't come when I'm sitting there talking about the value of guru. It's when, you know, somebody answers their question with a guru card in Slack and it's, wow. Oh, uh, there it is. Got it. And um, I think for a lot of products out there, that's the case. Uh, and so in, in that, um, in that situation, I would say a demo environment could be good enough. Right. Um you really, really can experience that firsthand uh, with with tools like the one you're building. Um, but it doesn't answer your question of, of free trial or demo. I, I think for most product companies, product-like companies, uh, it's a bit of both. Anything you can do to show rather than tell, which is inclusive of demo environments, is, is critical. Um, for products that are just so simple and straightforward, a free trial in a lot of cases is a no-brainer. So gotcha. Zoom's a great example, right? You just spin it up, you get it, you connect with somebody. There's not much to explain or do. The value is so clear. Um, when that value becomes a little bit trickier and that that water muddier and you have to do a little bit more work, I say anything you can do to demonstrate value up front, the better. Um, and if you feel like you can construct or architect your product in a way that can that can articulate and, and demonstrate that value in a 30-day trial period, um, then you should definitely do that. Uh, so any anything you can do to, to show rather than tell, I guess, is, is the ultimate answer. Awesome. Well, Steve, last question here. I know yeah. you're a busy guy. If you're a marketer out there, a product leader, or CMO, trying to make strategic decisions. What's one actionable tip that you would give those folks out there around successfully deploying a product-led motion? And of course, you know, something that they can like literally implement tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah these questions just keep getting better. Uh, <laughs> I, just to go back um, and talk, because I think this hits on both product and marketing about, um, we call them use cases at Guru, but this jobs to be done. It's a really, really great way to think about product-led because it forces you to be very specific about the problem you're solving and then create an end-to-end -end experience for your customer in order to realize that. And so I, we've got... Um, We've got four stages of that at Guru. We call it inspire, attract, accelerate, and expedite. Um, what that's inclusive of is, hey, somebody searching for my Slack environment is too noisy, right? Um, Guru hits them with a landing page that speaks specifically to how we can help uh, with a call to action to get moving. They get moving on that. They sign up for our product. They're introduced to a specific template that helps them in a specific integration with Slack we're giving them the right exact thing they need in the right moment. Um, and how do we carry that through to the customer facing experience, right? Where now they reach out to a rep with a question and the rep has all that context, has all that data. Hey, they came in from this landing page. They were trying to solve a Slack problem. I know that going into the call, into the you know intercom or drift chat. Uh, so I can check in on this specific thing. And then 
using all the data we spoke about as well to figure out, okay, once we help somebody solve that problem, what's next? What's like the most logical next step uh, for somebody to continue to find more and more value out of our product? And so when we start to think of these as specific promises you're making to your customer um, and having to fulfill those at every touch point of the customer journey, the implications across marketing, sales, and product are so obvious. You have to build those experiences into the product. You have to make sure your reps are empowered to have those conversations and have the right context. And the marketing team, like I said, needs to, needs to get people to the right place at the right time and present them with the right experience. Awesome, dude. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you so, so much for your yeah, time. Of course. If uh, let's say folks want to learn more about Guru or follow you and your content, what are some good URLs or handles to reach you? Yeah. Um, thanks for asking. So getguru.com. Uh, you can learn a little bit about us. You can tell us how good or not good our product led experience is now. I would love the feedback. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter uh, at Steve Marinick, M-A-Y-E-R-N-I-C-K. Would love to connect with anyone thinking about all things product-led. Always more than happy to talk shop. Awesome. And I just, again, have to give you a shout out. Shout out to Rick over there. JJ, we just spoke to him uh, recently. We are customers of Guru. We don't think we could actually operate without it. And our sales team uses it. Uh, are now, well, I am the marketing team right now and Joe, of course, uh, but uh, we're going to continue to deploy it here internally. So it's part of our workflow. It's part of our infrastructure. So we're big fans and the team is awesome. So uh, kudos to uh, to Guru and Steve, hope to see you in person one day. One of our co-founders lives in Philly. So That's hopefully awesome. one day yeah. we'll have a Philly office as well. Would love that. Yeah. Um, we're ready for you. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me on super excited about what you guys are building. Um, and really just excited to talk product led and, and, uh, see a, see a product really enabling that. Awesome. Well, have a great day. Thank you so you much. Too. Take care, man.